Welcome back to Celebrity Radio. It's Alex Belfield talking to some of my favourite people and, uh, of course, some of the world's biggest stars as well. And the biggest star in 2013 has got to be the royal baby. And the big question, of course, is how are we going to find out about it? Do we find out on the news? Do we find out through Twitter or Facebook? And the lady who can tell us all about it is Jenny Bond. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. It's so lovely to talk to you. And of course, that's the big question, isn't it? Who is going to make the announcement? How are they going to do it? And how are we all going to find out? I mean, we know it's going to be on a board. That's the first thing, don't we? That's right. They're going down the very traditional route, which I think is rather great, actually. So um, when Kate has the baby, um, a handwritten or typewritten note, I think it'll be typewritten, actually, a piece of paper will be uh, created at the hospital. It'll be signed by the doctors. It's a Buckingham Palace headed piece of paper. Then it'll be driven through the streets of London to the palace and put on an easel. Um, and that will be put up just inside the gate so people can gaze through the gates and uh, look at the announcement. So that's the way royal babies uh, announcements have been made over generations. And I think that's rather wonderful. It's lovely, but it is quite old-fashioned, because let's face it, if you talk to anybody under 30 today, especially if you go for dinner with them, they've got their phone in their hand through the whole thing, and they're just staring at Facebook and Twitter. So maybe they should open thebabyisborn.com or something and tweet from there. (laughs) Well, it's not only young people, you know. I'm the same. I'm on Twitter and Facebook, and I do all that stuff as well. But this is what's interesting, actually. Papershaker.com thought, well, okay, what about this? Let's, Let's do a little survey and they asked 2,000 people, that's a lot of people, and 82% said that they thought uh, making an announcement like this on Facebook or Twitter was, they said, crass, they thought it was a bit gimmicky, and they certainly thought it was impersonal. And a vast majority of people in their 20s and 30s, actually, 78% thought the same. What part are you going to play? Because let's face it, Jenny, you've been part of almost every big royal story since about 1837, haven't you? (laughs) Ooh. 1988, actually, is when I started, and I certainly never wanted to be a royal and wasn't remotely interested in the royal family, but here we are many years later, and I'm still reporting on them, writing about them, broadcasting about them a very great deal of my time, even in the 10 years since I left the BBC. Um, I, I spent a lot of time doing it. So, yeah, I'm kind of booked up to be there, well, not actually at the birth, sadly, but outside the hospital or in studios. Um broadcasting, writing, um, etc. And it's lovely. It's a lovely feeling, actually, to be still part of that loop and be involved. But conversely, um, the great luxury of my life is that when great great royal stories happen, uh, yeah, I'm phoned and asked, and, uh, and most of the time I say yes, but just occasionally, you know, I can now say, what, you know, I'm a free lady and I'm busy. <laughs> <laughs> That's just great feeling, it really is. What I love about you is you've got class and you've got integrity and you deliver every time. I just want to talk, if we can, a little bit about being a lady journalist because there's so much talk about it and people having to be given opportunities now because once you turn 25, they don't want you on the telly anymore. I beg to differ. I mean, when I see you on the telly, I know you know what you're talking about. You're going to deliver. I think we're getting a bit fed up of 12-year-olds trying to pretend to be Jenny Bond, aren't we? Well, you know, that's very kind of you to say so. What I, what I do think um, television should be is a reflection of society. So we don't want them all to be 20. Uh, we don't want them all to be 70. You know, we need a broad mix. And I think um, that yeah, maybe I suffered a bit of discrimination. I'm not sure when I, uh, when I was reading the news, for example. I did get bumped off reading the news as I approached that sort of late 40s mark. Suddenly, you know, a younger model was brought in. Uh, but I think the tide has changed now, and I think it's a great time to be an older woman um, on television. Opportunities are opening up, and yeah, I do feel there is a respect for, you know, our grey hairs and our wisdom, and that the odd wrinkle, really, so what? It doesn't really matter. Can I be a little bit honest with you, Jenny Bond? You can, indeed. I always thought, how do I say this without embarrassing you? Well, if I were to tell you you got me through puberty, would that offend you? Because you, I mean, you are sexy, aren't you? There's something about you. (laughs) Oh, well, that's very kind of you to say so. My my, my husband, hopefully, might agree. (laughs) But I mean, yeah, I, I, I I do care about how I look. And, you know, I tell you what, I think it was year before last, I, I, I was offered a facelift, um, and they were going to pay me to have the facelift. 
so a free facelift plus their payment. Obviously, they had to give an interview. And if I'd had a facelift, I would have happily given the interview. Um, but And I was very tempted, but I asked my husband, and he, rather as when I said I was going to the jungle, he had the same response. Basically, he's American. I think I may divorce you if you do that. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> So uh, it wasn't an option. So although I persuaded him I should go in the jungle and he concedes he was wrong on that one, uh, I have not persuaded him I should have a facelift. And do you know what? I'm quite glad I didn't because, um, I, you know, I'm, I'm growing to, well, I can't say I love my wrinkles. Of course I don't. But I'm going to grow old uh, gracefully, I hope. There is something a bit tragic when you see people like Joan Rivers, but then I think to myself, how much were they offering you for that? I mean, because it could pay for a few holidays in Barbados, couldn't it? It would have done, yeah, absolutely it would have done. But there you go, there's, there's more to life than, than, than money, and uh, there's more to life than looks. I think it is, it, it's interesting, there's, um, there's a proposition that, that's coming up which could involve me uh, in a, a panel of very strong women on television giving our views about uh, all sorts of social and national and political issues, and um, I think it's great that, that there is a feeling now, uh, as I was saying, that people with a bit of experience in life... Um, are worth listening to. It's um, also your intellect and your understanding of the story. What bothers me right now is we've got two ends of the spectrum. We've got those fighting the this sort of feminism cause, like Miriam O'Reilly, who's doing a brilliant job. And then I look at people like Katie Price, who are earning so much money for doing very little, just looking glamorous and getting their knockers out. There, there is a contradiction there, isn't there, at the moment? Well, I suppose there is, but I will defend Katie. I was in the jungle with Katie, and I was at her wedding, her first wedding. Um, and I think she's an extremely shrewd businesswoman. Um, I mean, it was really weird when I got to Australia, actually, sitting at a dinner uh, the night before we went in the jungle, and we talked about her boobs, and um, I wanted to know what they were like. And um, so one minute I'm the BBC's royal correspondent, the next I'm stretching my hand across the dinner table and squeezing Jordan's tits, actually. And I thought, you know, they were magnificent. <laughs> They were magnificent. They were magnificent and good on her. And I'll tell you what, I take my hat off to Katie. I won't hear a word against the way she has struggled and brought up her little boy, Harvey, against, you know, so many difficulties in the face of so many difficulties. And she's an absolutely great mum. So, yeah, um, she, she does her thing and we older ladies do something different, but both are valid. That's something that uh, you, you've always been aware of, the public gaze, the public opinion, and of course the public interest in the royals. That's what you've always been fascinated by. And I would say there was a period sort of late 90s when we all got a bit, ooh, it's not going so well. Now, of course, uh, Will and Kate have just brought it all back. Everybody loves the royals again, don't they? They do. The, the younger royal particularly are cool. Um, I mean, my daughter's 23, and for all that her life was immersed in, in royal reporting, because everything, you know, that happened to me sort of happened to her. I've broken promises all over the place. You know, I'll take you shopping. Whoops, no, I won't. Diana's gone and done something. You know, I'll be at your sports day. Whoops, no, I won't. You know, Charles has gone and done something. For all that, she couldn't give a toss about royalty until quite recently when she, she has a passing interest now in, in the young royals because they are cool, they are celebrities and that's vital for the future of the monarchy I mean it all goes really really well that they are such global superstars and uh, I mean the Queen herself has 80% uh, popularity rating you know? so uh, things are looking extremely rosy in the royal garden I think and, and you make a good point there. I mean, you have been as much a part of, of the royal story as they have. I mean, you were there throughout. Are you glad about that or did you pay a price? As you say, when something happened, you had to be there. How did that affect your life? Was it exciting at the time or was it a drain? It was exciting, of course. It was always unpredictable. And that's why I became a journalist, because I love the unpredictability. But once you've settled down and you've got a child, particularly, that unpredictability becomes a, a bit of a... You know, a, a crucifix, really. Um, and I did hate... I, well, I tried never to use the word promise to my daughter uh, when she was growing up because I knew a broken promise uh, was what would probably ensue and that was that was bad. But I, I depended on having a house husband. My husband gave up his job to look after our little girl, so I always knew um, that uh, she, you know, she'd have her dad there at all the big events in her life if I some horror I had to miss it so uh, it was it was taxing but of course it was great do you still pinch yourself when you know that they know who you are I mean some of the most famous people in the world the royals that we all love know who you are that's strange isn't it Jenny <laughs> well no not really because I've known them 
you know, watch William grow up, and I've met the Queen many times, and I knew Diana pretty well. Um, and Charles always has a joke with me, you know, he saddles up and says, I love your leather jacket, or um, are you wearing the wrong shoes again? Because I was always trotting around in the wrong shoes, maybe in a, you know, a potato field near St. Petersburg or something in high heels. And so we have the little jokes. So it doesn't seem odd to me, no. Um, whether they still remember me, I, I really don't know, but I like to think they might. I think that's fabulous. What great memories for you. What is next? We need to see more of you on the TV. I think what the jungle taught us was that you have an incredible sense of humour, as does Charles, of course. Um, is there other stuff you want to do? I mean, I've seen you on those cookery programmes and things like that. Cookery antiques, I've done all sorts of things, stars in their eyes, quiz shows, loads of quiz shows. You name a quiz show, I've done it, um, much to my uh, horror, because I tend to get brain freeze and make a complete fool of myself, but it usually makes lots of money for charity, which is great. Um, at the moment, I seem to be on a run of serious stuff. People think I've got a brain again, and um, I'm doing newspaper reviews, opinionated uh, shows, um, debates. Um, and uh, as I say, the, there might be a possibility of um, a, a show where I can with other strong, inverted commas, commas women uh, give my, my views about world affairs, which would be great, yes. I have to use the old grey matter a bit more than I'm used to, but well, there we are. When you say a, a programme with women talking about world affairs, you're, you're not talking about loose women, are you? No, no, I'm not. No, no, no. And it's, it's great fun. No, no, it's fantastic. Well, so... Involved in lots and lots of things. But at the moment, of course, it's the royal baby. Um, so I've got to uh, sort of make myself available as much as I possibly can and um, see how many people turn out to uh, to read that notice on the gates or how many people are going to hope to see it on Twitter and how many people would take a leaf out the Royals books and um, go along with Paper Shaker and uh, create a little moment of history by uploading their own pictures and sending greeting cards. Jenny, you're always fascinating. Thank you so much for sparing the time to talk to me. Let's give the plug then. www.paper-shaker.com paper-shaker.com is the place to find all the information. So lovely to talk to you today. Come on again, won't you? I'd love to. Thank you very much. It was lovely.